In this screencast, I will be talking about another form of air pollution, and that is the destruction of the ozone layer. So let's first uh, review a slide from earlier in the semester about the layers of Earth's atmosphere. Remember that the troposphere is the closest to the Earth, and that's the layer in which all weather takes place. That's where there is sufficient amount of oxygen for us to breathe and so forth. And that runs from about 0 to 10 miles. Then from 10 to about 30 miles is a layer called the stratosphere. The upper part of the stratosphere is shown here in light blue, but the lower part of the stratosphere, which is shown here in orange, is called the peak ozone layer. Ozone is a molecule that's um, three oxygen atoms together, so it's O3, and it's natural for it to be in the stratosphere. And if you have already viewed the TED Talk, then you'll know that when ozone is in the troposphere, it causes respiratory problems for humans. But in the stratosphere, it is protective for humans and other species because it prevents ultraviolet radiation from coming through and, and reaching us at Earth's surface. Ultraviolet radiation is damaging to cells. It could cause sunburn. It could cause skin cancer. It can cause cataracts. So we don't want this protective ozone layer to have holes in it. We want it to be protected. So I'm going to look at how, go through um, what caused some of these holes in the ozone layer and what progress we have made to reverse this situation. Okay, so these, uh, this slide has information which I've already spoken about. The stratospheric ozone layer provides protection from ultraviolet radiation. Ozone is O3. It has the ability to absorb radiation and protect the cells on Earth. Now we're going to look at the anthropogenic contributions to ozone destruction. Recall that the word anthropo is similar to the word anthropology, meaning human. Genic is, refers to generate or cause, so human-generated or human-caused contributions to ozone destruction. So I should have this word here in green because it is a must know. But there are a variety of chemicals that have the ability to break down the ozone layer. The one that has caused the destruction um, that we have seen since the uh, 1950s is chlorine, which is on the atomic um, chart as a capital C and a lowercase l. So where did this chlorine that was in the stratosphere come from? It came from, originally, from substances called chlorofluorocarbons. So they contained, this molecule contained chlorine atoms, fluorine atoms, and carbons. And these chlorofluorocarbons, which are abbreviated CFCs, had been used in refrigeration and air conditioning. They'd been used as propellants in spray cans, and they had been used as blowing agents um, to create uh, foam products like styrofoam. Now, since they have been banned, there have been substitute materials that don't contain these chlorine atoms and have been perfectly fine. So, the CFCs were banned in the United States in 19. 89, and most other countries uh, quickly followed on that. Uh, so the goal is to return to pre-1989 levels at the very least. That is predicted that it will happen possibly in 2075. So it's still going to take a long time to remove those destructive chlorine atoms from the atmosphere. Okay, 
Um, so what happens here? CFCs are released into the troposphere, the air closest to the ground. But then they keep floating upwards. They're dispersed into the stratosphere. Now I'm going to go through the process here. I don't want you to memorize the process, but understand the process. In the stratosphere, the UV radiation has enough energy to break the bond connecting the chlorine atoms to the CFC molecule. So then you have pr or produced free chlorine atoms. Now, these chlorine atoms act as catalysts. And a catalyst is a chemical that can break apart, um, cause a reaction to take place between particles, cause a reaction to play, take place over and over again without being used up itself. So in the case of chlorine atoms acting as a catalyst, they break apart an ozone molecule, but then they're not broke, it's not involved in the chemical reaction itself. So then they move on and break apart another chlorine molecule and another, excuse me, another ozone molecule and another and another. One chlorine atom can catalyze the breakdown of as many as 100,000 ozone molecules before it leaves the stratosphere. This results in a depletion of the ozone layer and the creation of what we refer to sometimes as holes. Uh, globally, ozone concentrations have decreased by more than 10%, and the depletion is greatest at the poles. There are chemical reasons why the depletion is greatest at the poles, and it has to do with um, ice molecules, um, interacting differently but uh, and enabling this to happen even more but that's why we have the greater depletion at the poles so when the stratospheric ozone um, has been decreased the amount of uvb radiation in particular that reaches the surface of the earth increases and again that's harmful to human health that's harmful to human health in terms of producing cataracts, skin cancer, and sunburns. To wrap this up on a happier note, though, um, it is thought that this depletion of the ozone, the ozone will reform, the ozone layer will reform. As long as we stay on this path, it should be reformed by 2075. I'm going to stop here and move on to a separate screencast for indoor and outdoor air pollution.